Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel where we do talk all things true crime. I wanted to bring you an article today from the Daily Mail and also stay tuned to the end because I have a video from Good Morning America to show you as well. So basically, I'm, this video is going to be Maddie Mogan's father. He actually came back out and he spoke again after the arrest of Brian Kohlberger for the Idaho Four murders that happened on November 13th. Brian Kohlberger was arrested on November the 30th, and he is in jail awaiting trial. We will actually have a live tomorrow morning at 10.15 to watch him go to court live. So if that's something that you're into, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, and don't forget the bell icon to be alerted to all new content. So let's go ahead and get right into it. It says, I broke down and cried. Father of murdered Idaho student Maddie Mogan described the moment he learned a suspect Brian Kohlberger had been arrested and still can't bring himself to read whole police affidavit. Ben Mogan, father of slain University of Idaho student Maddie Mogan, described his relief when investigators told him that they finally arrested a suspect. Mogan also said he could not bring himself to read the full affidavit detailing how police believed suspect Brian Kohlberger killed Maddie and her friends. The document details how Kohlberger allegedly stalked out the college student home, four, or, sorry, home 12 times and that his phone signal vanished during the murders. The sister of Maddie's best friend noted the duo had done everything right to avoid danger that night, but still met a tragic end. And then you can see here says um, Ben Mogan, who had been patiently waiting for weeks for news about his 21 year old daughter's murderer, had a big smile when telling Good Morning America about the moment an investigator told him they had arrested suspect Brian Kohlberger. He said, Ben, this is the moment we've been waiting for, Mogan recalled. The grieving father, however, said he could not bring himself to read the full police affidavit describing how they believe Kohlberger killed Maddie and her best friend, Kaylee Gonzalez, 21, as well as Zaina Carnado and Ethan Chapin, both were 20. I just broke down and I just cried, Mogan said about the document. I could only take so much of that. I still haven't read the rest of it. While details of the affidavit have been made, have been made public, an Idaho judge recently sealed a search warrant for Kohlberger's Washington apartment because it risked causing a premature end of the investigation. And then there's Mogan's father, you know, Maddie's father, Ben Mogan there. Just so happy that, you know that he's off that that the suspect is off the, sh the street okay as he spoke with gma the grieving father also described his daughter or this daughter his daughter as an angel who always made him proud along with mogan kaylee's sister olivia gonzalez spoke about how the two best friends did everything right when going out that night before meeting their grisly end they went out together, they called for a ride, went to a known establishment, of Olivia listed. They did everything you would want your daughter, your sister to do in that situation. She added that her family and the Mogas are still reeling from the tragedy that claimed their loved ones' lives on November 13th. We were left with not only missing them, exactly who they were, but wondering who they were going to become, Olivia said. Kohlberger, 28, was arrested in the early morning hours of December 30th in his family's home in Pennsylvania and subsequently charged in connection to the quadruple murder of the Idaho students. Kohlberger's apartment in Pullman, Washington, was combed by police for evidence into the on ongoing investigation. The suspect murder is in Pennsylvania native and was studying criminology at the University of Washington's Pullman campus, which is about 15 minute drive from Mo Moscow, Idaho, where the murders took place. Kohlberger was claimed he's, has claimed he's innocent while being locked up in the Latah County Jailhouse in Idaho. And then there's some more pictures for you guys there. According to the police affidavit, Kohlberger allegedly stalked his victim's home 12 times and was even at the home the murder up the morning of the murder. His DNA was also found on the knife sheaf that was left laying next to one of the victim's bodies. The document also shows that on the night, Kohlberger's phone pinged a cell tower close to the apartment to his apartment in Pullman. It's then seen leaving the area of his residence at 2.47 a.m. and traveling south through Pullman, which cops have confirmed lines up with the movements of his white Hyundai caught on cameras. His phone then stops reporting to the network with FBI experts confirming that it is consistent with the phone being turned off on airplane mode or in an area without phone coverage. Court documents show that his phone is not active again until 448 in the southbound lane of Highway 95 just south of Moscow. Police believe the victims were slain between 4 a.m. and 425 a.m. 
and then there's the documents. We went over all of these documents um, actually um, on my channel if you'd like to check that out. Um, the live is up. Search warrant documents filed the same day as his arrest state that compelling circumstance warrant the temporary sealing ordered in this matter. The, the information will remain secret until March 1st. Language used in the court document has left some questioning what the threat to public safety and threat to the privacy of witness victims and victims families names in the affidavit could be. The documents were filed before Kohlberger's identity was widely reported. The documents emerged following a gag order released by the Moscow Police Department last week. Latal County Magistrate Judge Megan Marshall issued a non-dismissal -dismiss order on January 3rd in regard to the murder case against Kohlberger. The order prohibits any communication by investigators, law enforcement personnel, attorneys, and agents of the prosecuting attorney or defense attorney concerning this case, police said in a release. Due to the court order, the Moscow Police Department will no longer be communicating with the public or the media regarding this case. Kohlberger has been charged with four counts of first-degree murder and one count of felony burglary. Idaho is a death penalty state. Fry defended the scarcity of information released during the investigation, providing more might have alerted the suspect of armed prog progress. Kohlberger's arrest is the accumulation of an investigation that has dragged on for more than a month and left the Moscow Police Department facing a barrage of criticism. Cops have been criticized for describing the murders as target while refusing to release any information as to why. And I'm going to go ahead and play that video for you guys now. So let's go ahead and play this for you guys. Idaho College murders investigation. Brian Kober, the suspect, is due in court tomorrow. Students return to classes and investigators share new details about what he was doing before his arrest. Mola Lange joins with the details. Good morning, Mola. Well, good morning, George. Those new details are shedding light on how investigators say they were able to link Koberger, the 28-year-old Ph.D. student, directly to the crime scene and the murder weapon. This morning, as the suspect accused of murdering four University of Idaho students prepares to head back to court, new details emerging about Brian Koberger's actions before his arrest. ABC News learning from a law enforcement source that federal investigators observed him in Pennsylvania around 4 a.m. as he discarded garbage in his neighbor's trash bin just days before his arrest. Trash ending up being key in the case. Police linking Koberger to the murders by collecting his father's DNA from trash outside the family home and matching that to DNA they say they discovered on the button snap of a knife sheath that was on the bed next to the body of victim Madison Mogan. If I had one or two words to describe Maddie Mae, it would be just an, an angel and that she was, she just made me proud. Ben Mogan speaking about his daughter Madison to ABC News and describing the moment law enforcement told him they'd made an arrest in the case. And he said, Ben, this is the day that we've been waiting for. Ben also describing his emotions while reading the evidence law enforcement say they had gathered against Koberger. I just, I broke down and I just, I just cried. I could only take so much of that and I just, uh, I, I cried. I still haven't read the rest of it. The police affidavit claiming investigators believe the four college students were killed between 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m. They say one of the surviving roommates was awake at the time of the murders and told police she witnessed the intruder seeing a masked man coming toward her before he walked out through a sliding glass door, the roommate then locking her door. Police say later that morning, the two surviving roommates called friends to the house because they thought one of the victims had simply passed out and wasn't waking up. The 911 call finally coming around noon. Officials say the two surviving roommates are not suspects. Overnight, Kaylee Gonsalves' sister, Olivia, saying Kaylee and Madison did everything right that night. They went out together, they called for a ride, they went to a known establishment. They did everything you would want your daughter or your sister to do in that situation. You're supposed to grow up together. That's your God-given best friend. And so we're left with not only missing them and exactly who they were, but wondering who they were going to become. On the University of Idaho campus, classes began, second semester classes began this week with heightened security. Meanwhile, Koberger, who was extradited back to Idaho last week, is scheduled to be in court tomorrow morning, guys. Okay, Mola, thanks. Let's bring our chief legal.
I just realized that I was on mute, but that's okay. I was just telling y'all that look at the dog. She's making her grand entrance. Her name is Mia. She's like made her grand entrance twice today, I think. So she's doing pretty good. Sorry that I was on mute there for that. But anyways, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you guys appreciate today's case coverage. I'm really, I, my heart breaks for Maddie's family. They, it, it breaks for everybody's family in this tragic tragedy. I mean, it really does. But when you see Maddie's father, He's just a broken man right now. So it's very, very heartbreaking to see him like that. Um, but if you guys did appreciate today's case coverage, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon. We do go live every day at 10.15 a.m., sometimes at 7.15 a.m. like we will tonight. So I will see you guys all in the live at 7.15. Bye, guys. Have a great day.